You're watching Reality Check. After close to 70 days in jail, the activist Tista Setulwad walked free this weekend after getting bail from the Supreme Court. Her dramatic arrest in June with the Gujarat anti-terror squad swooping down on her home in Mumbai was one of the most high-profile of crackdowns against activists under the Modi government. Many have seen the Setalwad arrest as the BJP settling scores for her activism during the Gujarat riots. The Gujarat police However, says the charges are serious, booking her for falsifying evidence to frame individuals linked to the 2002 riots, charges that Setalwad and her lawyers deny. The centre vigorously opposed granting her bail, saying she was behind the entire conspiracy. The court, however, went ahead and granted her bail with conditions, saying she had spent enough time in jail. And uh, Tista Setalwad joins us uh, live uh, from Mumbai, from her residence, uh, to which she has returned for the first interview after her release. Thanks very much indeed, uh, Tista Setalwad, uh, for speaking to us. This is the first time that we're actually speaking to you since the time when you were arrested and since you were released. And uh, so I'd like to start yeah. from that day in June when the ATS landed up at your house. Did you have any indication that this was coming? Because you, you had that... Supreme Court order just a few days earlier in the Zakia Jafri case, which said that, you know, petitioners uh, have, have sort of had yeah. doubtful intentions and there was a kind of premonition. Did you have a premonition at all? No, unfortunately, there was no such premonition because one, uh, one on the reading of the Supreme Court order, one expected due process of law. But, uh, uh, but uh, uh, Srinivas, I would like to really speak about the conditions in jail for women and children the facilities available or not available sure. because I think that's a real issue that uh, citizens and civil society need to look at uh, because you know uh, institutionalization of under trials and convicted prisoners is something we don't turn our eyes often enough to and if we could do that I think no, no, it would we'll, make a huge we'll, difference to the lives we'll of so many do people. That. Yeah. We'll absolutely do that because I understand also that you might have some uh, you know sort of limitations in terms of being able to talk about the case. So I'm not getting into the case here, but I just want to understand it more from the point of your experience of what happened when the police, you know, from the time when the police landed uh, no, up. No, I mean, frankly speaking, uh, frankly, uh, frankly, one expected uh, uh, due process, a notice if necessary, a notice, etc., to be given, etc., not the kind of crackdown as it happened. Okay. And, but you also actually said that there was some kind of roughing up or manhandling? You see, that's all now a subject matter of a court inquiry in Ahmedabad. So, hmm. again, that's sub -judice. So, I'll be giving my evidence there where I'm a complainant. So, I'd really like to speak about that in the court okay. when I do. But, but, you, but like you said, you were yeah. hoping for due process and you felt the manner in which this happened, that wasn't the case. I mean, I think that's for everybody to see, no? I hmm. mean, it's very evident that, uh, you know, it, it, the, the Supreme Court judgment was just one day before this happened. So, uh, that really is there for everyone to see and everyone to judge. Right. And, and tell us now, because you, you were, what, in jail for almost 70 days, uh, this entire Actually, period. Actually, 63 days in jail, 7 days in police remand. 7 days police remand and 63 days in jail. Okay. Uh, yeah. So... So, again, yeah. without getting into the specifics of the case... And by the way, Sabarmati, yes. Sabarmati yes, Jail is also where Kasturba Gandhi was. Uh, and uh, you have, uh, uh, you have a, uh, now a new jail, which is a women's jail, hmm. uh, uh, next to the Bhai Ward, which is the men's jail. And you have something like 200 women there. 50, around 50 are convicted prisoners and the rest are under trial. Right. Of course, there's a whole history to that jail. So again, uh, Tista, just not to get into uh, the specifics of the case, but tell us about that experience. I mean, both with the police custody and then subsequently in jail. You see, I, uh, I, was, I was a bit concerned and as were my lawyers about security and other things. Hmm. And uh, I saw that my, my security lay in being with, being living as an ordinary woman under trial. And I, I, was, I was put into the... Uh, women's barrack number six with uh, uh, women and children and other pregnant women and some other young younger women and mm. I think 
uh, I felt instinctively that my security lay where there were other women around. Uh, I mean, life in jail is never easy. Uh, it's, you're constricted. Uh, there's a 6 a.m. to 12 noon uh, window when you can be out of the barrack. And then again from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Mm. Uh, and after 6 p.m. you're inside. And on a Sunday it's 4 p.m. you're inside. So it's tough. Uh, I, what, what I found toughest was not having enough areas of silence and uh, reflection because they have a really rather nice study center and library hmm. inside the women's jail where there's an 18-seater room where you can sit, sit and write and read. But very often that library is kept shut, not kept open. So one of the running sort of little battles one had was uh, that can you please keep it open for regular timing so that some of us could sit and read there and write there. Right. But you know, uh, they, they had their, they, they said they had constraints of staff, etc. Then you have the whole issue of health in jails. You have uh, many women who are suffering from chronic issues, hmm. uh, and uh, you know, it's uh, there are also mental health issues, Shinivas. You know, there are mental health issues because of confined spaces and. I think uh, mental health is something that we don't take seriously enough in this country. Right. What I found very, very uh, difficult was that uh, the jails run by what is known as a jail manual in our country, you know, and uh, when, you, when you are sent to judicial custody, sometimes completely unexpectedly, hmm. uh, you know, a copy of this manual is not given to you. So you don't really know uh, right. what, 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 what are your rights or what are not your rights. So one of the things I think is important to happen is that in Hindi, in Gujarati, in any regional language, copies of the jail manual need to be made available to the under trials so that they know what their rights are. Right. You know? Did you, okay. Did in, you terms of, in terms of family visits, in terms of lawyer visits. Right. Did you experience any hostility at all in the jail? Because, I mean, this was, this, because this is in Gujarat. <laughs> so, was there any of that? Uh, yeah, so I mean, I was fearful of that. I was a little concerned about that. But honestly speaking, uh, like I said on Saturday when I came out, the matrons and the subedar and uh, the women's staff were very, very decent and very quite nice actually. Oh, okay. So I didn't that's, really find any specific problems there, really. I didn't. That's, that, that's good to hear. What, what about your stint in police custody though? What, what was that like? Actually, that was very strange because I was at the crime branch and uh, after being whisked away on the 25th, uh, one landed there in the morning of the 26th, which was a Sunday. And then uh, by evening, the uh, magistrate had uh, given remand of four to five days. They had asked for 14 days. And right from that Sunday evening to the next, next Saturday, hmm. when I was sent to judicial custody, which is like almost f six days or whatever, I was not called for questioning except once. Uh, which was on, uh, which was from 11 p.m. to 2:30 a.m. Just okay. three hours, and uh, the rest of the time I was just sitting around. You were just called for questioning only once. Yeah, only once. That's that's extremely surprising because, like you said, you were there for almost uh, close to like what was it, five to six, six days. Six days. Yeah. Six, six. I mean, five to six days if you. I mean, if you count on Sunday, Sunday to Saturday. Yeah. I see. And any explanation given as to why? Because no, 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 no explanation. Okay, but these are coming to the wider question of your arrest, which, of course, uh, you know, in, in several quarters was was seen as a sign of an attempt to once again target civil society, to once again target voices that may have been seen as critical of the establishment. Uh, with, of course, the counter coming, and again, we're not getting into the specifics of the case per se, with the counter coming <coughs> that this is not, you know, conventional activism, this is motivated, this is, you know, got, got political, you know, dimensions to it. See, I'll just repeat here the July 11th judgment of the Supreme Court, which came out uh, while I was in jail. I, I, I read about it uh, through the newspapers. I used to get two newspapers a day hmm. and also read some of the Gujarati papers that some of the fellow under trials got because I can read Gujarati. It's my mother tongue. And that two-judge bench of the Supreme Court on July 11th passed a very strong judgment on what bail norms should be in this country. Hmm. And I, I, I would just like to reiterate that, you know, because I was also in jail at, in a period, Shrivasan, which is a post-COVID period, you know. Hmm. So I have seen fellow uh, uh, under trials, some of them who became friends, who 
who have been there for two and a half years, four years, eight years. And uh, in the COVID period has just made it worse because the access to justice was not concerned, sure. uh, con considered an ex essential commodity. So the courts were shut, the bail courts were shut. So, you know, one really needs our country to realize that personal freedom is important. And, you know, incarceration cannot be the norm. I mean, I had women coming in and out. We had women coming in and out of our barracks, come in one night because of Daru sure. ke danda ka hai ya jagade ke hai. In two days, they are out. You know, in three days, they are out. Others who are there for some pasa, somebody's there for gakoka, somebody's there for NDPS, somebody's there for uh, murder. You know, I can understand some of the uh, charges are serious. Right. But uh, uh, the, what the Supreme Court says about the bail hearing should happen within two to three weeks in the Sessions Court, then in the High Court, and then, uh, you know, it needs to be taken very seriously. Okay, but of course, that those, are, those are important questions that, you know, one should turn one lens on. But, but coming back to what I was saying, that this idea that, you know, this is, that your arrest and is part of the wider sort of pattern of crackdown on activists, with, as I said, the counter being that this isn't conventional activism, there's a, there's a kind of political dimension to it. To that, what would you say? Again, talking you see, in a general I mean, sense. You have to, I would, I would uh, yeah, 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 I got it. I wanted to say that we have a set of laws in this country. We have a set of laws, IPC laws, other laws in this country. And uh, those laws need to be applied with some degree of honesty, you know, and with some degree of... Uh, uh, um, uh, impartiality and autonomy by the police you know mm. and I think uh, uh, the, the whole issue of the police not becoming a, an arm uh, um, of the executive is, is, is the question here I mean look what happened with Mohammed Zubair for instance you know while I was inside jail then he gets bail mm. there are so many other examples there are so many other examples of this kind of quote-unquote crackdown happening and uh, I think it, it, it's, it's quite worrying, actually, because if you have a situation where the police b becomes used to and gets away with this kind yeah. of without due process uh, arrest and raid, it can actually be a threat to anybody tomorrow. And, you know? and, and to the, and it could to be the, a businessman. It could be anybody. It might start with activists, but it can then be extended to anybody. Okay. And, but to the allegation of motivated activism, you would say what? No, I would, like I said, I can't speak about my case, but no, no, in I a both, general both sense, myself in court yeah. and my organization. No, I think I've, I mean, I mean, we have a constitution in force in this country where, where the whole issue of fundamental rights, social justice, directive principles is something that you can, uh, 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 you know, uh, go to court on. Okay. You know, and if there is a, if there is a, uh, if there is a feeling by a set of people, whether it is citizenship law or any other thing, where they, they feel that they are being discriminated by the state, right. then, then the constitution gives us the right of, of justiciability to go to court. You know. okay. That right cannot be taken away from individuals. Okay, fair enough. Just, just last question before I let you go. Uh, this is still what is called interim bail. There are stipulations on it. Uh, That's right. Does, does this, is this going to circumscribe your work or your activism? I mean, I don't think so because, uh, I mean, as far as this case is concerned, it's being fought in the courts. Right. Uh, as far as the other work that my organization con continues to do, whether it's on citizenship in Assam, whether it's on hate crimes, okay. whether it's on constitutional education, principles in education, hopefully we'll just continue. We have a wonderful team out there. In the last 70 days, the work did not stop. Right. Uh, it, can't, it cannot depend on one individual alone. We have been team building assiduously for the last 10 or 12 years. Right. And uh, uh, there are grassroots workers from the different regions where we are working. And I, I just hope that it will not stop. And it has not so far stopped. Oh. All right. Okay. Tisa Settlewar, uh, thank you very much indeed for uh, joining just us. Just one thing, if you don't mind, yes. Vasu, I just yes. wanted to mention. Can I just say that, you know, I spent... Yes. The 75th year of our independent the Amrit Mahatsu will be spent in jail this year. And uh, all of us women under trials were really looking forward uh, to some sort of celebration in the jail. But the women's jail at Sabarmati had nothing on 15th August and that upset us deeply. Okay. All right. Noted. Uh, thank you very much indeed uh, for joining us.
Okay, let's go across uh, two panels. Rinda Grover, senior advocate of the Supreme Court, is with us. Swati Malik, uh, advocate and spokesperson of the Congress Party. But uh, Alok Watts, leader BJP, let me start with you. Appreciate all of you patiently listening in. Uh, Alok Watts, uh, your first response. As I said, Tista Saludad, not really uh, free to talk about the specifics of the case. But overall, this question, Alok Watts, of whether this is more a kind of settling of scores or vendetta. Like he said, one interesting detail that she was in police custody for six days five to six days, they only called her for questioning once. Does this, is this settling scores or is this genuinely See, pursuing Vasu. justice? See, Vasu, I don't know why she was questioned only once during her six days or five days stay there. That is something to be probed. Mm. But what I heard from her uh, statements that she made, she talked more about the reforms in the jail that should happen rather than anything about her own case and, you know, any deliberations that, on I, that. No, no, but Alok, but that, as she said, she is limited, limited by the fact that she is still very much fighting those cases. So, that was a prior conditionality that she can't Maybe, talk about the specifics. I, I'm happy to hear that the reform she has talked about, and it must be taken into consideration. Some of the things she highlighted was very good, according to me. But yes. But coming back to the question though, no, no, is, this, she's, is, she's, the, she's, is, the, is the arrest, is, is the way that the attempt to made to arrest her, the, you know, Solicitor grabbed, General, yes, Solicitor General she, vigorously arguing against her being granted bail, is this settling scores with her? No. You should not forget that she is still on interim bail. Her main bail petition is yet to be considered in the High Court. Right. So the, so the allegations against her, whether of, you know, using uh, foreign funds or then, uh, you know, making derogatory remarks against the Prime Minister and various other things, they are still to be considered as an okay. offence. Those are not... The ruling uh, has to be done. Okay, ruling okay. still is to come on those. No, no, I'm saying those are not pertinent to this particular case. Uh, this is something else. This is a... a allegation of forging documents uh, connected to the 2002 riots. Yes. But uh, Vrinda Grover, uh, the fact that, you know, of course she's out on bail, but it's still interim, the court saying that the bail does not have any kind of impact on the ongoing cases or the evidence. What, what does one make of that argument? Yeah, I think what the Supreme Court, by granting interim bail, is saying and the Supreme Court actually recently in a July 2022 judgment of Satinder Kumar until has said the same thing, is why arrest? Repeatedly now the court is focusing the attention of the law enforcement agencies and the state hmm. that we should have reasons and grounds to arrest. Hmm. That is why we have the Arnesh Kumar guidelines saying if the offense is under seven years, sentence is under seven years, give a notice under 41. You don't arrest because there is an FIR. Uh, uh, the pre-trial, pre-conviction detention hmm. uh, should not happen as an under trial. You are, con after conviction, you are sentenced, you will serve your sentence. That is what the court permits. We have a very strange methodology taking place with the state and law enforcement and actually states across party lines do right. this. Everybody must be arrested because there is an FIR and I think the Supreme Court both in the interim bail order of these stars as well as in the Satinder Ankil is right. asking the law enforcement agencies repeatedly Why arrest? ask yourself the question hmm. do you need to arrest so what did the Supreme Court ask here and the question that you asked Tista was very relevant the Supreme Court asked the, uh, the uh, Solicitor General for how many days did you have police remand did you, for how many days did you question her? When do you keep a person in detention when there is custodial interrogation required? Once the custodial interrogation is not required, hmm. why is an under trial in prison? Right. Perhaps in cases where there is a gravity of offense, flight risk, the person may be a repeat offender in sure. those Otherwise, no. That is the signal the Supreme Court is giving. Okay. So, but, but the point here is, Swati Malik, that at the end of the day, 
the arrest flowed from the Supreme Court's observations in the in the Zakia Jafri case, where they said there were false allegations made against the Gujarat government by disgruntled officials. All involved need to be in the dock. Uh, this was seen as an indication to try and, or at least was interpreted by the police as an indication to move against some of these people. And the allegation being made is that this also included the Congress party. The BJP has said this on record, and you must have heard this, that people like Tista Tasselwad were working hand in glove with Congress leaders, including late Ahmed Patel, to try and malign Narendra Modi. Shmasan, it's really strange, this whole FIR that also was registered after the Supreme Court order and quoting the judgment, you know, verbatim, the FIR has quotes from the judgment. Hmm. Right? It's very strange because, you know, there was already an inquiry going on since 2011 on the same, on the same events and same, uh, you know, this new FIR on which has been registered, hmm. which this I had already joined in, right? So there was no, in my opinion, there was no need of this fresh FIR which right. was only done to surpass the 2011 inquiry. Secondly, to bring in Mr. Ahmed Patel's now, now that he's not here to defend himself. He was here from 2002 till today, I mean, till, till 2021, he was hmm. there. Why did the BJP, why did the Gujarat government not take any action, may not make any statement or, you know, make any sort of, register any FIR against him that time? Now, when the gentleman is no more between us, just right. to... Just to you know, uh, you know, malign his name just for elections, and we know how this BJP works, anyways. We know how the central. So you're government denying works. any link. The allegation was that even cash was paid by the Congress Party or by late Ahmed Patel into Tista's NGO. Absolutely, absolutely. There was whatever, whatever has been, uh, uh, you know, the allegations that have been put against the Congress. Unfortunately, Mr. Patel is not there. So the right. whole, you know. He was the best person to answer those questions. Okay. Right? But he's not here and the BJP is chosen okay. very well. Right. Okay. Alok Vats, you know, as the famous expression goes, na, chronology, aap chronology samajhe, that if you look at what happened and then tell me whether this doesn't imply a political aspect to it. So on June 24th, the Supreme Court makes the observations, which I mentioned, that all involved against these false allegations should be in the dock. June 25th, Amit Shah gives an interview to ANI saying NGO run by Tista gave baseless information about 2002 riots to the police. June 25th, the ATS lands up to pick her up. Obviously, the, the way things happened... And Isn't this was, a very clear... Pol I mean, doesn't this smack of political vendetta? That's what you feel, but it is not so. You okay. see, the court, the, court has, uh, the court said that whatever she was saying against the Prime Minister and making false allegations and giving false evidences. So there had, it had to be proved. And that is why she was taken into custody. And still, the court has given an interim bail. But still, she has restrictions on her. She has to submit her passport. She has to submit her, uh, no, no, submit her bond. So why all this? Uh, if she is but, not a culprit, why all this is done against her? Because it has to be proved. It has to be probed and proved all the charges. And yes, right. Congress has been behind her to malign the uh, okay. government and also the Prime Minister. Vrinda Grover wants to come in. Vrinda. I think we should respect some basic principles of our law, which is that when a person is an under trial, here we don't even actually have a charge sheet against her. It may well be, I can't predict the future. But to say that, oh, a person has, is only on interim bail, she has been asked to surrender, so there must be. So we are constantly creating this uh, demonizing of human rights defenders. We are constantly trying to criminalize certain mm. types of work that civil society activists do, whether it is social justice, whether it is getting people justice. I think the real question that we all actually should be reflecting on is the law on mass crimes not uh, robust enough in our country. Right. We, and we have had mass crimes under each regime. We've had caste atrocities. We know that many people who are probably behind it or the otherwise who commit these crimes are not, uh, right. uh, uh, the law is unable to catch them. So we need to actually be reflecting on what are the gaps in the law on mass crimes and how do we make the jurisprudence stronger? And secondly, that going to court and securing justice, you may not be able to prove a case because cases have to be proved through forensic truth. Right. It does not mean that that is the whole truth. Okay. We need to, and the Supreme Court judgment did not ask for them to be arrested. 
and if the supreme court judgment did indicate certain things without any investigation hmm. by reciting the the supreme court judgment paragraphs and fir is lodged what does that say about police investigation okay all right well let's see how it uh, plays itself out but uh, we're completely out of time thank you so much uh, for joining us thank you for watching reality check good night